Number 8. Cyclops Skulls Fans of Greek mythology know all about the Cyclops, but could the recent discovery of strange skulls in the Philippines be proof that these one-eyed monsters once actually existed? A number of skulls with a single eyeball socket squarely in the middle of their foreheads were found in limestone caves in the country's southern islands. Local folklore from native tribes tells tales of giants that once roamed the plains of central and northern Mindanao. According to legends from the Bukidnon, who were highlanders of the Philippines, a group of one-eyed giants thought of as heroes fought against the first Spanish conquistadors to protect the land. They sound remarkably similar to the Cyclops. A race of one-eyed giants described in various Greek myths as everything from fearsome monsters to cannibals and builders of ancient city walls. But the creatures found in the Philippines were so important to local tribes that their members kept skeletal remains of one so-called cyclops named Agio, worshipping him in one of the nearby caves. As stories about the mysterious skeleton spread, it caught the attention of experts at the National Museum who launched an investigation, later confirming they did find a skull with with one single eye socket in the forehead. But as the investigation continued and experts dug further into the origin of the skeleton, they concluded that the skull belonged to an ordinary man who had been buried in the cave. The explanation for the single eye socket was an artificial formation of stalagmites because human bones and limestone have a similar composition. The stalagmites formed on the skull and the hole was instead the socket of the spinal column. Even though the skull turned out not to be a one-eyed half-man, half-beast giant with with supernatural powers, the skeleton was later reburied, allowing the tribal people to preserve the legacy and continue the worship of their own ancient marvel. Number 7. Bokor Hill Station Something happened at a posh resort overlooking the Gulf of Thailand, where a once sprawling hotel and casino now sits as a crumbling, abandoned ruin of its former glory. Bokor Hill Station was once a popular destination for French colonists. It was the place to be for Cambodia's elite who were drawn to the dramatic landscape of Bokor Mountain. The resort was a place to get away from the stifling heat in the valley below, offering sweeping views, royal residences, and spacious terraces for rest and relaxation. Unfortunately, during the nine months of construction of the resort, an estimated 1,000 workers died. Could those deaths have cursed the resort before it even opened? Many of the guests in its heyday were Europe's rich and famous who came to the resort for parties, dancing, and music that filtered down into the surrounding jungle below. But after Cambodia gained its independence from the French in 1953, the town was abandoned, with Cambodia's upper class taking over into the golden age in the 1950s and 1960s. The party continued well into the mid-1970s, until the Khmer Rouge, a radical communist movement, used guerrilla tactics to win power and take over the Cambodian countryside, which included the resort. During the reign, the group was responsible for an estimated 2 million deaths. The Khmer Rouge were notoriously violent and soon overran the country. It took an invasion by the Vietnamese in 1978 to take back control from the soldiers who loved the remote location and used it to hide out in the rugged mountainous landscape. Finally, in the 1990s, the UN forced a ceasefire and Cambodia saw a resurgence of peace. Soon, tourists returned to Bokor Hill Station. Though the buildings, including the giant female Buddha statue, the abandoned church, and the palace hotel and casino were now aged and weathered, visitors continued to flock there to catch a glimpse of the ruins and imagine what it looked like in all its opulent glory. Some people might wonder why the Cambodian government doesn't renovate or rebuild the resort, but others think leaving it there in all its crumbling glory is the best way to remind residents of the tumultuous past and how peace is a fragile luxury in Cambodia. Would you want to visit these beautiful crumbling ruins? Tell us in the comments. Number 6. Plain of Jars The next time you're in Southeast Asia looking for a unique cultural landmark to visit, instead of heading to the usual spots in Thailand or Vietnam, take a detour to Laos. There, you'll find a jaw-dropping spot steeped in mystery. Just outside the tiny town of Phon Savan sits thousands of acres of unspoiled, lush greenery. But there's more than meets the eye in the sprawling countryside, something you'll spot the moment you arrive. Scattered across those hillsides sit countless gigantic stone urns, abandoned there thousands of years ago. Some archaeologists think the huge jars were used as a type of coffin where bodies were left to decompose. Some even think the bodies were moved into different urns, depending on which state of decomposition they were in. Not a job for the faint of heart, that's for sure, but the theory isn't that far-fetched. Local cultural beliefs include the idea that the soul takes time to transition from the earth, needing to go through the decomposition process gradually before being cremated. The only way to uncover the true purpose of the jars is to examine them, but the site 
is a dangerous one. During the Vietnam War, the field was a primary dumping ground for U.S. fighter pilots, making it the most bombed area in the world even today. An estimated 80 million undetonated bombs are hidden across the plains, making it a treacherous place to visit. The telltale signs of these bombings can be seen on many of the jars that have been damaged or destroyed. Most people are only allowed to view the site from afar, but that hasn't stopped locals from trekking through the fields. Sadly, the journey has been deadly, with tens of thousands of Laotians losing their lives since 1964 while traveling across the field. Of the 100 different sites spread across the plain, only 9 are open to public visitors. Still, the trip is worth it if you want to learn about local history, lore, and the real reason Laotians created the massive stone jars for their dead. Would you travel to Laos to see the plain of jars despite the danger you might face? Leave your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our other videos. Number 5. The Hanging Coffins An ancient rite is alive and well in the Philippines, one that involves a unique burial practice you'll have to see to believe. A group known as the Igorot people hand-carve their own coffins, but when it comes time to say a final goodbye to loved ones, they don't bury them in the ground. Instead, the tribe hangs the coffin from the side of a cliff. The site is a haunting one, with aged wooden caskets suspended high above the ground below. The rite has been taking place for over 2,000 years, and the belief behind the custom is that the Igorot people are helping their dearly departed be closer to their ancestral spirits. The custom makes for quite the spectacle, one that starts with the elderly carving out their own coffins from local timber. When they are done, they paint their name on the outside of the coffin in preparation for their burials, a process that takes time and isn't like anything you've ever experienced before. After a person dies, their body is placed in a wooden death chair and tied with leaves and vines to keep them in place. That's when the real process begins. The blanket-covered body is smoked over a fire to keep it from rotting, while relatives of the deceased visit to pay their respects and tend to their fire for several days. In the past, coffins were smaller than they are today, which meant family members had the gruesome task of breaking the dead person's bones to fit them inside. Luckily today, the hanging coffins are longer. Once the smoking process is complete, the corpse is wrapped in rattan leaves and placed inside. Then, mourners haul the coffin up the bluff and allow the deceased fluids to drip onto their bodies in the hopes it will bring them good luck. After the grueling procession is complete, villagers use wooden pegs to suspend the coffin from the cliff face, leaving the dead in their final resting place. If you thought you had to travel to the Philippines to see this marvel of burial rites, you can find similar customs in pockets of China and Indonesia. Even though most other places have stopped practicing this rite, the most recent hanging coffin was placed in 2010, allowing the residents of the Philippines to keep their ancient culture alive. Number 4. Buddha Park For travelers looking for a spiritual awakening, there's no better place to do so than at Buddha Park in Laos, 15 miles east of the city center sits Xi'an Quan, the spirit city, where over 200 statues depicting Buddhist and Hindu figures await discovery. A priest shaman named Luang Pu Bunluela Sulilat, who studied both religions and wanted to honor them with his artwork, created all the statues in the park. With hundreds of other statues, including humans, demons, animals, and mythical creatures, there is something for art lovers of all kinds. The focal point of the park is a pumpkin-shaped sculpture, whose demonic figure invites visitors to enter through its mouth and climb three stories, representing heaven, earth, and hell. Before reaching the top, for those who brave the trek, they are treated to a bird's eye view of the entire park. Another stunning sculpture found in the park is of a massive reclining Buddha that stretches 120 meters, almost 400 feet. Buddhas with intricately sculpted bizarre skull-topped hats and gods can be found within the park, all made from concrete. After visiting the park, you can go to Salakeoku, another similar park nearby, also filled with sculptures by the same artist. Again, Buddha is featured in many of the statues, as well as a three-story pavilion with artifacts. There is also a massive sculpture of the Wheel of Life with fantastical characters depicting the karmic cycle of birth and death as part of the installation. If you want to get up close and personal with the man behind these fantastical sculptures, Bunluwea Sulilat's mummified body is located inside the museum where some of his followers believe his hair continues to grow even after death. Number 3. The Stone Forest Most people travel to see things they've never experienced before. For those who want to visit somewhere with magical scenery steeped in mystery. The Stone Forest in Kunming, China is just the place, home to the Nakshi and Yi people. It is a natural phenomenon that formed 270 million years ago when the Yunnan Guishu Plateau was a vast 
ocean. The climate then was hot and there was a lot of rainfall as animals and plants grew and decayed over time. Their skeletons, which in calcium, deposited on the sea floor and created a thick layer of fossil sediment. Over time, the seabed rose again, raising the hidden layers of limestone to over 1,000 meters, 3,280 feet above sea level. It took eons of weathering and erosion from acids and carbons in the atmosphere, where the ditches that formed the stunning stone pillars, gates, and pinnacles that make up the forest today separated the rocks. Even locals believe they were living in a fantasy land whose origins were told in the story of a beautiful girl and her star-crossed love. According to their legends, a member of the Yi people, Ashima, was kidnapped by an evil landlord who forced her to marry him. Luckily, her lover, Ahe, rescued her, but it wasn't a happy ending for the pair. On their way home, a massive flood swept Ashima away, turning her into one of the stone pillars in the forest. She's still visited by locals who believe the Ashima rock is a protector of the Sani people even today, with many scenic areas, including stunning waterfalls, deep caves, and dazzling lakes. The stone forest, with its oddly shaped stone pillars, create a magical landscape that attracts visitors every year. Number 2. The Hanging Monastery Imagine attending a service at this hanging monastery in the Shangxi province of China. A monk named Liao Ran built it 1,500 years ago, during the Northern Wei Dynasty, 386 to 534. It suspended 50 meters, 165 feet above the ground at Hangshan Mountain in an incredible display of engineering where holes were drilled into the cliff side for support beams that the foundation of the pavilions were built on. There are multiple pavilions, all connected via plank roads along the face of the steep cliffs, offering worshippers a dizzying glimpse at the deep valley below. Incredibly, the monastery looks much like it did when it was first built, thanks to the natural overhang that protects it from flooding and runoff erosion that would have weathered any other structure. Its location between Kuiping Peak and Tianfeng Peak also means the monastery is protected from wind erosion. If you thought that was unique, the monastery also has the distinction of being the only monastery in China that houses Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism all under one roof. To celebrate each of the religions, over 80 bronze, iron, terracotta, and stone statues are collected inside, including side-by-side -side sculptures of Lao Zi, Confucius, and Shakyamuni, the founders of the three main religions of China. This unique aspect of the monastery came about when travelers stopped at the remote location to rest, with so many looking for a place to worship, but reluctant to do so. At a place where another religion was practiced, the monastery adopted all three religions, so more travelers felt comfortable staying and praying there. With both the North and South Pavilions, the Long Bridge, with a hall for worshipping statues and sculptures, it's a stunning haven for visitors who want to get closer to nature when honoring their chosen god. Number 1. The Rainbow Mountains One look at the Zhangye National Geopark in the northern foothills of China's Krilan Mountains, and you'll definitely do a double take. The mountain signs look like something you'd see in a pop art painting. Vibrant splashes of bright orange, blue, yellow, and red decorate the peaks and valleys of the mountain range that stands over 100 meters tall in places. Formed over 24 million years ago, the mountains get their colorful hue from sandstone deposits, iron and trace minerals, and erosion. As tectonic plates shifted, they created the mountainous peaks and rolling hills, with wind and rain sculpting them into towers, pillars, and ravines. But how did they get their color? About 55 million years ago, the Indian plate collided with the Eurasian plate, folding a landscape of flat sandstone, lifting the mountains and exposing sedimentary rocks hidden below the surface. Weathering and erosion swept away the top layers of rocks, exposing the underlying formations made up of different combinations of minerals and chemicals. As the land reacted to local conditions, it allowed the true colors of the underlying rocks to shine through, giving the Rainbow Mountains their distinct colors. If you plan to take a visit to the Zhangye National Geopark, the best time to take in the natural masterpiece is between June and September at sunrise or sunset. The largest part of the park is the Linjie Dangjia scenic area, but there's also an area where the formations look like melting ice sculptures. If you thought you had to travel to the other side of the world to see the natural wonder, look down at your feet. If you find a rust-colored stone, there's a good chance you've identified a piece of sandstone stained with iron oxide, the same process that created the Rainbow Mountains. And if one day you're able to travel to China's Hulian Mountains, you'll feel like you've just stepped into an art gallery. That's the Earth's way of showcasing just how beautiful nature can be. Number 8. Secret Underwater Alien Base Could a video of a mysterious object in the sky be evidence that aliens exist? A strange object seen flying through the clouds and then hovering motionless over Lake Erie is believed by some to be an alien craft. 
But could it be a scout ship that launched from an underwater alien base? A local philosopher and author of mysteries surrounding the Great Lakes in North America thinks so. Dr. Richard Souter believes an alien base sits at the bottom of the lake that borders both the United States and Canada. And if locals are to be believed, alien aircraft have been spotted in the area for years. Multiple records of saucer-shaped crafts, unnatural beams of light, and other strange phenomena have come out of the Lake Erie region from multiple sources, with more than 20 credible sightings over the last two years. One video filmed by locals shows multiple objects hovering over the lake before merging into one. But it's the video recorded by a father and son team that offers the best view of what looks like an alien ship. The video shows a massive aircraft hovering over the surface of the lake with the water beneath it shimmering as though the extreme force from the ship was causing a disturbance. The area has been given the nickname of the Cursed Triangle because there have been so many sightings over the years. Ships, planes, and even people have disappeared there. So what is it about Lake Erie that makes it such a hotbed for UFO activity? Until someone is able to get closer to one of these ships or divers can investigate the lake bed, we can only watch and wonder where those strange lights in the sky are coming from. Number 7. The Bog Mummy More than 2,000 years ago, a man was buried in a peat bog in north-central Denmark. When his body was discovered in 1950, it was so well-preserved that experts thought that he had been recently murdered instead of dying between 405 and 380 BCE. But when researchers finally removed his body and were able to get a closer look, they found out the shocking truth of his vicious death. A leather noose was still tied around his neck when scientists examined his remains, and archaeologists think he was a victim of human sacrifice, a fate he faced in order to ensure fertility. It's also possible that he was sacrificed as part of a supernatural belief that the bog was a portal to another world. Scientists can thank the peat bog where a Tolan man was found for his remarkable preservation. High acidity, low oxygen, and the cold environment of the Danish bog all helped to keep his body from decomposing, giving experts a wealth of information about the man and his way of life. He was so well preserved that his last meal of porridge and fish was still in his stomach. They also found he was infected with three kinds of parasites from contaminated water or undercooked meat. Even though Tolan man is a remarkable find, he isn't the first bog body to have ever been unearthed. Across Britain and Northern Europe, over 500 bodies from the Iron Age have been found in peat bogs, made from layers of dead moss. Bog bodies are the result of a fascinating scientific phenomenon that naturally mummifies bodies, making their hair and skin turn a leathery color. Clothes, slaughtered animals, and weapons have also been found submerged in peat bogs, but the discovery of bog bodies gives us a look into the strange burial practices of centuries-old humans. 6. Decorative Viking Teeth The discovery of decapitated skeletons shocked road workers in Dorset, England, who accidentally unearthed a 1,000-year-old burial pit. When researchers analyzed the remains, they found strange carvings in the teeth of the deceased. Each of the skeletons had horizontal lines filed into their teeth, a process that would have been excruciating for the recipient. 54 bodies and 51 skulls of young, fit men were discovered in a pit near Weymouth, each with slash marks across their necks. Other brutal injuries included hands and bones with slice marks, and leg bones and ribcages piled separately from the rest of the bodies. Archaeologists think the remains belonged to Viking warriors, and some think they had their teeth filed this way to intimidate those they met in battle or to show off their status. The bodies were found near one of the oldest roads in England, known as the Ridgeway. It was used for thousands of years for ritual burials, long before the invaders were slaughtered by local Britons. At first, experts thought the Romans were to blame for the massacre, but radiocarbon dating pinpointed their arrival at around the 10th or early 11th centuries, which meant that the Vikings, who were considered a force to be reckoned with, suffered a devastating defeat in the village that saw their dead dismembered and buried in the pits. Why do you think the Vikings carved their teeth with these decorative lines? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 5. Egypt's Severed Hands Most archaeologists working in Egypt expect to find priceless works of art, ancient statues, and the occasional mummy or two. But during a recent excavation trip, a team working near an ancient Egyptian palace at the ancient city of Avaris were in for a shock when they uncovered 16 severed hands. But that wasn't even the most fascinating thing. All the hands were unnaturally large, and only right hands were found. 
So was it for macabre reasons? Were the victims brutalized for having massive hands? Or was there something else going on 3,600 years ago that made someone remove several human right hands? To figure out the reason for the gruesome discovery, experts looked at ancient Egyptian art and writings to find their answers. Tales exist of soldiers cutting off the right hand of an enemy as a symbol of removing their strength permanently. This practice wasn't just for the sake of brutality. Any soldier who did the deed was said to receive a bounty of gold in exchange for their sacrifice. Most of the hands were located in a pit outside the palace grounds in modern-day Tel el Daba, but two were found in front of a throne room in an area that was controlled by invading Canaans who fought against the ruling Egyptian forces. So, were the hands gifted to the rulers by Egyptian soldiers seeking gold or their enemies? Only researchers can find out who they belong to. Until then, experts continue to study the remains and scour historical records to see if they can determine who were the victims of this evil act. Number 4. Europe's Werewolf Trials We've all heard the stories of the witch trials that took hold of Salem, Massachusetts in 1692. But almost 200 years earlier, people on the other side of the world were persecuted for being vicious creatures. From the 15th to 17th centuries, European courts convicted men and some women of being werewolves, accusing them of mutilating and eating children. Like so many other cases of persecution, these werewolf trials started when superstition, religious beliefs, and political clashes inspired people to look for scapegoats to explain the hardships they were facing. The scary thing is how similar these trials were to the persecutions in Salem for witchcraft. Those seen as outsiders were accused of consorting with the devil. They were blamed for everything from crop failures to infertility and impotence, and those who were accused of attacking children were rounded up and tortured until they confessed, without real evidence that any of these people were actual werewolves. Their accusers seemed to believe old folk tales of the mythological creature. For some reason, the people of the Middle Ages believed that animals wanted to consume them, and for whatever reason, they used that as an excuse to persecute their neighbors. Werewolf lore isn't only a modern thing. Stories of humans transforming into wolves goes as far back as 2100 BC. And there is even a Greek myth that Zeus was once fed human remains by King Lycaon, who Zeus later turned into a werewolf as punishment. When witch trials spread through Europe in the 1400s, hundreds of men and women were convicted and hanged after being accused of ruining crops. Some were also blamed for mutilating cattle after transforming into wolves. In the French Alps, where real wolves often preyed on livestock, Prosecutions continued, with villagers being accused of being werewolves by their neighbors. Citizens often armed themselves with clubs and pikes to find, hunt, and kill the accused. In France alone, up to 30,000 people were executed over a 100-year span, showing how delusion and prejudice contributed to these unjust persecutions. What do you think inspired this mythological phenomenon across cultures? Tell us in the comments. Number 3. King Tut's Space Dagger In ancient Egypt, Pharaohs were worshipped as godlike figures, and one powerful ruler's legendary dagger might have been made from an out-of-this-world material. King Tut's tomb was filled with countless treasures that archaeologists are still working to understand, but a recent examination by researchers might shed some light on the origin of a 13-inch blade that some researchers think was made from a meteorite. Using an X-ray scanner to study the object, a team from the Egyptian Museum in Cairo decided to examine the blade. It was found buried with Tut's body and has an embossed handle with a crystal pummel and a golden sheath with the head of a jackal, feathers and a floral pattern down the side. But it was the blade itself that gave researchers a thrill. The study confirmed that the iron dagger blade had high levels of nickel, cobalt, and phosphorus at levels that showed it had been crafted from a meteorite found in 2000 in the Egyptian city of Marsa Matra. Clues to the origin of the blade can be found in ancient hieroglyphics. Egyptians wrote of iron that fell from the sky which experts now think means the ancient people not only knew about meteorites, but they used them to craft precious objects, including Tut's infamous dagger. The night sky, the heavens, and the cosmos were all important symbols in ancient Egyptian culture, so it made sense that King Tut's artisans would have gathered the remnants of a fallen meteorite and crafted a dagger from it. They would have considered it a gift from the gods, the very gods that not only gave Tut his power, but watched over every Egyptian and blessed them with fertile crops in the rich Nile River. King Tut played an important part in Egypt's history, becoming a pharaoh at only 9 years old and ruling until he died at the age of 19. When archaeologist Howard Carter discovered Tut's tomb in 1922, he found a treasure trove of jewelry, sculptures, ritual objects, and the famed space dagger that researchers now think has meteoritic origins. Number 2. 
Shang Dynasty Martyrs Many powerful cultures around the world asked the followers to show their devotion, but for China's Shang Dynasty, those who did so met a gruesome end. When experts set out to excavate the Yingzhu tomb, one of China's oldest and largest archaeological sites, they were stunned to find rows of bodies buried in tomb pits. As they worked to preserve the discovery, they found that more than 150 bodies had been buried there. As they continued to study the pits, they realized the site was a lot bigger than they originally thought. Almost 200 pits were uncovered, and up to 11,000 human skeletons were found. Corpses buried one on top of the other, stacked together or crisscrossed in piles. Even more startling, many of the bodies had been decapitated. As one of the earliest dynasties to rule China, the Shang brought in the Bronze Age from 1600 to 1046 BC. They were known for advancing mathematics, astronomy, artwork, and military technology. But this new discovery offered researchers a deeper look into the cost of living under the rule of the Shang dynasty. Bones unearthed at another site in the city of Anyang show that prisoners of war were often used as slaves and later slaughtered. Sacrifice was common in their religion, but not all those who were killed were devotees. Sometimes large groups of slaves were killed simultaneously. With the king serving as a priest, he had authority over everyone in the kingdom. Communicating with his ancestors for guidance and sending out hunting parties to round up primitive tribes, he would later sacrifice. But the Shang dynasty couldn't last forever. Around 1046 BC, villagers rose up against King Di Jin. Tired of his brutal treatment and atrocious torture of people, they called for an end to his rule. An opposing army took advantage of the turmoil by rounding up nearly 200,000 slaves and along with the local army, they attacked. Many of Jin's soldiers refused to fight for him and when some of his forces joined the other side to overthrow him, Jin committed suicide. It was a sad end to an oppressive leader, one whose influence can still be seen in the mass graves unearthed by researchers. But by finding the evidence of such atrocities, experts are able to understand the lasting effects of the dynasty and its brutal vision. Number 1. Sacrificial Aztec Altar The discovery of an ancient subterranean altar in Mexico has revealed ties to a 16th century ritual that could have been the beginning of the Aztec civilization's downfall. It was discovered 13 feet beneath modern-day Mexico City, and among the trinkets and incense burners, experts found a giant clay jar filled with burned human remains. Attached to the altar, five chamber rooms and a kitchen with an ancient fire pit were also located. But it was the giant clay jar that gave experts a clue about the purpose of the altar room. Painted on the side of the vessel, the head of a water snake symbolizes the forces of the underworld. Now researchers think the human ashes inside might have been a sacrificial offering to Aztec gods. Thirteen incense burners were found surrounding the vessel, which was an important number in Aztec culture. Researchers from the National Institute for Anthropology and History in Mexico found the altar, and they think it is a relic of the Nahua people an indigenous population of Middle America. When experts were able to date the objects, they realized they were left there about a century after Spaniards arrived in the area to conquer it. Along with the human remains, researchers now think the Nahua might have left the sacrifices there as one last hope of appeasing the god, who they thought was so angry he sent the Spanish to what is now Mexico to conquer it. It wasn't long after that that the Aztecs fell to the Spanish, and the land's indigenous people lost. Still, this discovery showed how the ancient culture used religious rites as a way to honor their past and fight to preserve their future. Number 10. The Satara Mawe Tribe In most societies, becoming a man usually means something like getting your driver's license or making it all the way with a girl. For the Sataramawa tribe in Brazil, becoming a man is much, much more painful. The Sataramawa tribe believes that to be considered a man, they must experience the most excruciating pain imaginable. Facing that pain would prove their strength and worthiness. According to the tribal chiefs, a life lived with no kind of suffering or effort is hardly worth anything at all. The leaders subjected boys as young as 12 years old to hundreds and hundreds of bites from bullet ants. 
The bullet ant has the most painful sting in the animal kingdom. Entomologist Justin Schmidt, the inventor of the Schmidt Sting Pain Index, said the sting of a bullet ant was like huge waves and crescendos of burning pain. It wasn't just two or three of these waves. It continued for around 12 hours. Crash, recede, crash. It was absolutely excruciating. That was just one bullet ant. For the Saterimawe initiation ritual, boys put on gloves made of leaves that are filled with dozens of these ants. Then, they must keep the gloves on for 10 minutes while performing a ritual dance. Then they do it repeatedly for a total of 20 times. The boys experience unimaginable pain, shake uncontrollably for hours, and sometimes experience muscle paralysis, disorientation, and hallucinations. Once the ritual is complete, the boy is now a man, ready to face the dangers of the Amazon rainforest. Number 9. Cicada 3301 not every secret ritual involves ancient tribes deep in the jungle. Some secret societies possibly still exist to this very day. This ritual is so modern, it involves cryptography, internet puzzles, hacking, and more. There's even a feature film about this secret society. We're talking about Cicada 3301. It all started in 2012 with a mysterious image posted on the website 4chan. The image, signed by 3301, was just white text on a black background that read, We are looking for highly intelligent individuals. To find them, we have devised a test. There is a message hidden in this image. And just like that, the race began. What began as finding a hidden message in an image file turned into an online scavenger hunt with increasingly more complex puzzles. Supposedly, Cicada 3301 used these puzzles as an initiation ritual to find people skilled in cryptography and cyber security. One person who solved the puzzle and claims to have been part of the group said that he eventually worked on a coding project for Cicada 3301. He said that he barely knew what was going on. I wasn't sure what I was getting into. They insinuated they were part of a bunch of different organizations. He said, To this day, no one is sure if Cicada 3301 was just an elaborate prank, a government recruiting tool, or something even more nefarious. For now, the secret society appears to have gone dark, or perhaps they have just gone deeper into hiding. Number 8. The Order of the Skull and Bones How about a secret society whose members include former U.S. presidents, formed at the prestigious Yale University in 1832? The Order of the Skull and Bones continues to recruit members into its hidden folds to this very day. Each year, they invite 15 senior Yale students to take part in the initiation ritual for the Skull and Bones. The ritual takes place in a place appropriately named the Tomb. In a giant, windowless fraternity house, they only allow members and initiates inside to participate in secret meetings and rituals. One reporter allegedly infiltrated and recorded the most sacred of rites for the Skull and Bones initiation ritual. The reporter said that the ritual involved initiates enduring obscene sexual insults, an imitation throat-cutting murder, and kissing an actual human skull. They finally bring initiates into the Order of the Skull and Bones by chanting the mantra, The hangman equals death. The devil equals death. Death equals death. Some say that the Order of the Skull and Bones is nothing more than an overblown college frat house. Conspiracy theorists believe that the Skull and Bones are part of a plot to establish a new world order, and the society controls the CIA. Whatever the case, both former President George W. Bush and former Secretary of State John Kerry confirmed that they were part of the Order. Number 7. Oro Society 
found in remote regions of Sierra Leone, Liberia, and the Ivory Coast. The Poro Society is an extreme boys club. They only allow men into the group through secret initiations. The roots of the secret society run deep with evidence of its existence going back to 1000 AD. Because it's been around for so long, they consider becoming a member of the Poro Society an important rite of passage for adolescent boys. Once a member, they elevate the boys in social status, prestige, and even politically. To become a member of the Poro Society, they subject boys to sleeping in groups in the wild, far away from friends and family. They are led by a chief known as Ebeni to learn secret Poro traditions, including drumming and song. It's not all song and dance though. Part of the initiation involves grueling self-mutilation, cutting, stabbing, and scarring themselves. Once they complete their initiation, they return home as full-grown adults. According to one study, most male adults that hold an elite position of power are part of the Poro society because of the symbolic power of the group. That same study found that members use their position within the Poro society to evade the law and go unpunished for human rights violations in the name of defending culture. Number 6. Sandy the Sandy is essentially the female version of the Poro society. Existing in many of the same regions as the Poro, the Sandy initiation is much like the Poros. They seclude the girls deep in the woods, far from their homes. But it gets much worse from there. Part of the Sandy initiation involves female genital mutilation or FGM. It's as gruesome and painful as it sounds. Many regions where the Sandy exists are still trying to fight the barbaric ritual, but for the Sandy, it's meant to help women bear children. The scars exist to prove that the women are part of the Sandy. They teach them their womanly duties, including domestic skills, farming, and medicine. After the initiation and education are complete, the women return home and are eligible for marriage. Some women escape the horrid ordeal and try to spread awareness. One survivor said they forcibly took her from her home like a criminal and beat her severely. Another said that they forced the girls to lie in the blistering sun with nothing but a leaf on their backs and told them to stay in the sun until the leaf dried out. Fortunately, progress is being made against these awful initiation practices. Political leaders in Liberia have enforced a strict three-year ban on all Sandy practices in the region. Number 5. The Freemasons Of all the secret societies, this is probably one of the more popular ones. That kind of defeats the purpose of it being a secret, doesn't it? Anyway, the Freemasons have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. They still shroud many of their rites and rituals in mystery. All Masonic rituals take place in a lodge, their secret meeting place. Since we can find Freemasons all over the world, each lodge may have its particular standards and practices. For example, some may have their initiation rituals written in a script, while others may not. This lack of standardization helps further keep the Freemasons shrouded in mystery. All Freemason initiation rituals heavily involve symbolism, with Freemasonry being described as a beautiful system of morality, veiled in allegory and illustrated by symbols. Most initiations involve different degrees, some up to three degrees of initiation, from apprentice to master. Some lodges will also use tracing boards, illustrated depictions of emblems and imagery to teach new initiates about being a Freemason. Once initiation is complete, members use secret hand signs, handshakes, or spoken codes to gain access to meetings or identify each other in public. There have been some very famous Freemasons throughout history. Do you know any of them? Leave your answers in the comments below. Number 4. Leopard Society Have you ever heard stories of cannibals that live in the darkest jungles of Africa? 
Well, some of those stories might be true, and they might involve the Leopard Society, existing at least from the 1700s until the early 1900s. Members of the Leopard Society wore leopard skin clothing and hunted with weapons made from leopard claws and teeth. The Leopard Society would hunt unsuspecting travelers that would pass through their lands. Once they had their prey, they would cut off their flesh and organs. The blood and body organs of the victims were used to ward off evil spirits, prevent illnesses, and defend against spiritual attacks. Sometimes, they drank the victim's blood for more strength on their next hunt. Edgar Rice Burroughs borrowed heavily from the idea of the Leopard Society in the novels Tarzan and the Leopard Men. Interestingly, the leopard skin clothing also inspired some of the costume designs for the tribes of Wakanda in Marvel's Black Panther film. The Leopard Society no longer seems to exist in modern Africa. One scholarly article said that the depictions of African people as barbarians and savages have caused concern for the representation of Africa. The same study states that these fictional accounts contribute to stereotypical and racist representations of past African societies being overemphasized. It's certainly an interesting take on the old school ideas of cannibals. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. Number 3. The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn they formed the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, or just the Golden Dawn, in London in 1887. They are a secret society involved in the occult, the metaphysical, and the supernatural. Some famous members of the Golden Dawn include Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Bram Stoker, and W.B. Yeats. Founded by former Freemasons, the Golden Dawn shared similar initiation rites and degrees to the Freemasons. Unlike other secret societies, the Golden Dawn allowed women to join. This was a pretty big deal back in the late 1800s. Supposedly, they wrote the rituals for the Golden Dawn down in the cipher manuscripts. They discovered the 56 folio bundle of encoded writings, decoded, and found them to contain many occult rituals, including Kabbalah, astrology, tarot, and more. No one knows who originally wrote the cipher manuscripts, and some believe that they were nothing more than forgeries. After many revolts and splinter groups formed, the Golden Dawn only lasted around the 1970s. An organization filed under the name Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn for non-profit status in 1988. They granted that same organization a trademark and patent for the symbol of the Golden Dawn in 1997. Could this occult secret society still lurk out there today? What do you think? Number 2. Epe We can find the Epe Society in West Africa, including Nigeria and Cameroon. Coincidentally, the word Epe in the Ekoi language means leopard, but don't confuse them with that other leopard society. According to this society, Epe is a spirit that lives deep within the jungle. That spirit is present in all Epe society rituals, and the members must honor the spirit. Members consider themselves messengers for their long-dead ancestors. Through the spirit Epe, they communicate and pay tribute to those ancestors. The Epe society also believes in taking care of their own law enforcement so to speak. Members make and enforce their laws, dole out punishments like fines or boycotts, and judge their cases. They do all of this intending to keep those ancestral spirits happy. They only allow men into the Epe society. They are initiated around the time when they reach puberty and must maintain their membership in secret. Supposedly, there are seven or nine ranks within the society, and men can pay their way up in ranking. The higher their ranking, the more power they have in their village or town. 
We can still find Epe shrines in modern regions of Nigeria, including the city of Calabar. These shrines serve many purposes as a meeting place, location for festivals and rituals, and the initiation and induction of new members. Mainly, they revere these shrines for their religious meanings, and some have secluded spaces to make offerings to deities or spirits. Number 1. The Illuminati The Illuminati seem to be the granddaddy of all secret societies, and for good reason. No one is sure where the line is between fact and fiction with the Illuminati. If they exist, that's probably exactly how they want it. The Illuminati existed in Bavaria way back in 1776, formed by Adam Weishaupt. Weishaupt wanted to eliminate all religions and topple every government so mankind could live peacefully and as equals. But that group supposedly only lasted for 10 years. Many modern day groups claim to have ties back to the original Illuminati, but we can prove no actual linkage. Members of the Illuminati would have secret code names for one another. Like the Freemasons, they also heavily use symbolism, such as the Owl of Minerva and the All-Seeing Eye. Initiates would have to undergo a grueling three-year process to be allowed into their society. Once allowed in, it would force them to secrecy under the punishment of death. Which mysterious ritual surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. See you soon.